Good day and welcome to part 19 of the Excel restoration. You can see it isn't here, we've just got pickets. So, hope you enjoy. Motorcycle seat, and it doesn't look that great, but it's not that bad. It's a bit dirty, a couple of little scars on there, but the rest of it's pretty good, really. It's a bit warm down here, and of course, it's really, really dirty underneath. Now, these bikes have an inner guard down sort of this area here, and one coming off the back, and this part forms part of the my guard assembly. So we need to take this off and replace the cover. So basically what we're looking at doing is unpicking all these little staples. And there is a gazillion of them. Well there are a gazillion of them. Let's talk plural here. So I'm just going to go around, dig them out, just stable into the plastic backing. Bloody hell. Of course this has all been here since about 1980. And once we sort of pull a few out, we can just pull the staples out like that. We just want to keep them though. Make sure we put them in the bin and not leave them in the driveway floor or garage floor. Because this is the perfect recipe for punctures. There's little parts seeing them. But the actual getting them out itself isn't that bad. So we don't break the plastic. The plastic could well be sort of brittle after all this time. Oh, that was good. That's broken. The other thing you'll find, they can be a bit difficult because a lot of moisture gets trapped under here. And therefore, they rust. Got a few staples there. Chuck those in the bin. And we can take a cover off now. And we can just unroll it. You don't really need to on this. Uh, bit of seat damage there. And looks like this has been off before and someone's put additional padding in. There's the old cover. You can see there's water stains, that sort of thing up the sides. But we'll keep it in case he gets another bike with a worse seat on it, I guess. Now this will all come off. You can see that. And just remove the padding. I don't want to get that wet. It's not that great actually, but it is serviceable. So then we're stuck with this thing here. And what we can do with that is basically just clean it up. There's some brackets, see so brackets go down here on the inside. But this all needs to be cleaned up with a a brush and some water. Might even use Scotch Bright because it'll be scratched up a bit, but we need to go and clean that. Right, so here's the seat base. Believe it or not, cleaned up. It still looks pretty grungy underneath, but um, it's virtually impossible to clean because a lot of the dirt is actually into the plastic. Now I can colour sand that out, or at least use wet sand. It's probably a better way. Wet sanding is probably a better way of putting it. But the problem is then you're going to thin it out. You never see this stuff anyway. So unfortunately it doesn't look that great. But having said that, I want to see if we've got the right cover. Now, if I turn that around and get the seat padding, which looks just as bad, that sort of sits over like this. And it's molded on. I've got some Dacron sort of stuff, a bit like that, to sort of stuff around here and there to get it nice and smooth. And of course the cover we're putting on is much nicer than the old one. It's got piping and it's got Honda written on it and all this sort of other stuff. I just want to see if it's the right one which by all accounts it appears to be. Switch it over. Uh, what do we got? And I'm just going to turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. You can see it's all horrible at the front, but we need to get the straight edge of it and stick it over and then that of course will tuck underneath. And of course the thinking is maybe a bit too short. I guess once we pull the sides down and around it's going to end up fitting really well. So they will just wrap around. So what I'm going to have to do is put a couple of staples in first. Now, we're using an electric staple, or just a crappy one from the local hardware. I've had this for years. GMC is the Bunnings cheap brand, which is global machinery company. We used to call them good Makita copies, but they're not even a good Makita copy. But I think I'm going to start by just stapling a corner or two. And I think then it'll give us a, a reference place to begin. Um, just fold it over and just whack one here and one there 
if it all goes belly up and we have to unpick it, then we will. So I'll just grab a bit more. I'm going to put the seam on the base, like that, and that didn't work, but it might hold for now. And it's going to wrinkle like buggery, so we've just got to stretch it and muck around with it, but at the end of the day, it will look good, because the other one looked crap, so I'm going to bang one in here. These aren't going in that well. They're not going in, good boys and girls. Well, that is right there. No, oh, well, let's keep going, eh? These staples, they're, some of them are bending over unless you really hold them tight against it. So I've got some of them on there. The cover's extraordinarily tight, which is what you want. You don't want it baggy. So just got back from Jason's. There's the seat cover on. There's a couple of little lumps and bumps in the foam. Some of that might settle down. The piping, it's been stitched in a funny way and also the Honda at the back is a little bit off center. You can see it's closer there than it is there, but there's no other way of doing it if you're going to keep the piping and the rest of the trim to the level it's meant to be. He had a proper trimmer stapler and so he could go over the work that I did <coughs> because it was dodgy because I used the um, basically a hardware shop table gun which wasn't going to cut it. The next bits that go on of course are these brackets that hold the seat to the bike. They are different from one another in that uh, one of them's got this thing at the back here. Not the fog is what that does. Sifting through looking for different fasteners. I need a long one for the top of the engine. Um, I've got the grips and everything on, at least the um, Cables are these shouldered ones. I've got those all on. That's all good. But there's another 8mm one I need, which is one of them with a seatbelt. There's one, the right length, and I wanted the proper Honda ones that are sort of um, shouldered with a little stamp in the centre. And I can't find it. This bike was so cobbled together when we got it that some stuff's here and some isn't. The gear shift we've got here, this has been repaired in the past before. We had it plated and that looks about the right reach for that. So I just need to get a, um, what do you call it, lock washer. I also ordered this little guy here, which is the correct, I think it's the correct Honda gear shift lever boot thing. It's that sort of beehive type thing. And we can just get a bit of slip and just slide that over, uh, slide that over there. Perhaps with a rubber grease or something and get it over, but it's about the right length. It didn't say it was for an XL, it said it was for an ATV or some crap like that, I don't know. But we'll put that on, at least then the gear shift looks good. Um, and it's just a matter of sort of sifting through all this stuff and finding the right fasteners we need. The speedo head um, is really dirty. We're going to pull the speedo and odometer out. We're going to paint and polish that. I really hope we don't crack it because we do it screwed. That has to be sort of glued back together. That's the bottom side, which is rough. That's where I was sort of picking away, trying to separate it. The top side's pretty good. So we'll paint that, and then we'll run a bead of silicon inside, press that back on, tape it up, let it sit overnight. And there's just a couple of little grommets um, and shouldered doodads, what do you call them, washers, and I'll put some crown donuts. They're just a six millimeter thread, and I've got a pack of those. That's cool. Of course, this little bezel goes over the top, off, start, da, 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 so that's good. So it's just a matter of picking through bits and just finding what we need um, as fast as we can, or at least as efficiently as we can. Some of this morning fresh crap over here. Make it all slippery and inside. And just push him over. And there we go, still slippery. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll hose that off, but just slid that over and it looks really good. That's not an XL251, as I said, it was an ATV or something as advertised as. Um, a lot of people use, use fuel line on here, and yes, it'll work, but it just doesn't look good. You know, that's the proper kit there, and I think it looks wonderful. All right, a couple of finishing touches on the bike. Got the mirror on, oh, that looks rather lovely. This one's got a stripped out thread, so we're gonna stick a thread insert in there. Gotta put the horn on, a few other bits and pieces. Um, tank looks mad. Also, um, color sanded that, which I didn't originally want to do, but the um, there's not a glittery component, uh, well you can't see it there, but 
it does pop more with the polished guard and of course we're going to take this off and do this and that side cover and here as well uh, at the moment though i'm working on the indicators these are sort of non-jenny ones but they're nice and discreet so i'll stick those on now i'm just going to um tin the earths this is a bit dodgy uh, if i can find the end which is there They've got these sort of rubber mount things on them. And is that on? Maybe it's not been on long enough. There we go. I'm just going to mount them in here. This isn't great, but that's all I've got. Oh dear. Solder it up and heat shrink it. Get the solder flowing all in there. That ain't going nowhere. So I've got to do that for a few of them. It's unfortunate the size of that earth tab, but what do you do? Once you put heat shrink on and mount it up behind that bolt. It's not the right size, but it'll be fairly discreet. So we're back to a naked bike again. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. We're going to do the other plastics, as I mentioned before. I've taken all the rear guard off in preparation for doing that. We have to tie all this off again, make it all nice and tiny, and we've got the horn in. So, we're still plugging away, not wrapped with those front indicators, they're sort of facing in like they're cross-eyed, but we might have to just dick around with them a bit. I've stuck the wire in clear tube, and anyway, we'll sort that out. Thinking, thinking. I've only got a vent on this bracket. Yeah, probably. I think so, I think you're right. Dave's being anal. He's noticed that the powder coating was getting scratched where the seat was mounting. So I've got fabric tape here. Make sure there's no air bubbles in it. <laughs> I am. I'll talk about Can that. I feel it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all shaky. Put it on the bottom of the um, seat, do you think? Actually, I think is it, yeah, it's contacting there too. Make sure they're the same length. Don't use too much, that's expensive. <laughs> I get some of Val. That's where I got it. <laughs> How much did it cost you? Nothing. <laughs> <it to me. laughs> Alright, so I got the horn mounted, sort of tucked in nicely. I love the way Honda engineered this, everything's just so neat and so um, tight. Levers, grips are on, front brakes all functional, we're good. Clutch cable, managed to thread it through here so it steer clears the instrumentation on that bracket there. Got the guard off, we're going to colour sand that. I'm a bit nervous about the front guard because it's the clear is really thin. I didn't put much on there because I was worried about the flexing in it. Still got to change that bolt out, but given that he's changing the whole engine out, I don't think it matters too much. Um, What else is there? I don't know. Oh, mirrors. Look at the mirrors. That's brilliant. I think my lens is dirty. The picture doesn't look very good. And we're just going to solder some bullets onto there and they can get plugged up and the rear ones really sort of rough, ooh, rough the wiring in for that so it's now just a case of i've taken some um some of the clear off off the rear guard that feels a lot smoother i might give it a little bit more we just want to make this back bit here look a bit more presentable so it sort of matches the tank and I can see where it's relevant. Just put tape there, you reckon? Yeah, there, there, yeah. there, there. And there. Where's that back bit? That's on that little ducktail thing down there where the exhaust is, I think. No, oh, we've got to fill the, the shocks, the forks, what do you call them? The forks up? Yep. Put the bash plate back on. Do I need to wipe that with some crap or? Yeah, yeah, I'll get this on just a sec. Clean up a bit. Um, I'll have a look at this speedo head. And I keep talking about it and I haven't done anything with it. So I reckon now might be a good time because it looks like crap. Here it is here. Seat fasteners and donuts and all that sort of stuff. Actually I need to get that key. I need to get that coated. The helmet like. Hopefully they've got a hood that goes over there. Probably repeating myself heaps. 
and that's what I do because I always forget. I film at different times, different days. Sometimes I do a bit, sometimes I do quite a lot, and forget everything. So of course my videos are often repetitive. Right, speed ahead looks absolutely terrible, and we're not going to get it much better to be honest. So what we need to do is oh, it's just using a screw there. Um, I'm going to pull this. In. Nice. Probably shouldn't do this today because I'm feeling tired. But I'll try and find some other machine screws the same thread as these. They'll be metric, so straight off the bat I'm at a disadvantage. And I think this comes out in two pieces. But there's no way of uh, making it look better without pulling this stuff out. Ooh. Right. I can feel it in my hand now. Damn. Right, so we've got the speedo itself and the odometer which drives off the dog there. So, we've also got this which is rooted. So we're going to get light bleeding through from one side to the other. There's also a grommet missing from there, but I reckon because we are butchers, I reckon I can put something like that in and get a wad punch, put a hole in there just to give that a bit of weatherproofing. So, the plastic's gone, it's all, it all needs sort of filing back. The plastic's gone, is rough. Um, the top of it's nice, the bottom's not, that's where I prized it apart. It was stuck sort of across there, but the top was loose, which is why water was getting in. So I've got to think about putting grommets or something over the top of these. Actually, that might work, depending on how much it pushes into there. Um, these are Dave's, he bought them around yesterday for the speedo head. I reckon they're too shallow because the original ones were a lot thicker, so I can get more of those. But we might resort to something like that with a wad punch hole, just to let the light out and seal up against the back of the speedo, so that might be a blessing in disguise. Those screws need to go there. I can see them, and you'll notice the plastic's gone all pale, and that's because of UV light or you ultraviolet rays basically breaking it down. Well, that might be dirt because it's underneath, I don't know. But what worries me about this is this is crazed. If you can see, there's tiny little cracks all through it. And we need it better than what it is there. So, let's go and try something with some 2000. I'm just going to rub it very gently. And then I'm just going to buff it. I'm not going to do much more than that because... That's my rag. Because I don't think we're going to get any added benefit from it. So that's nice and dull. There's a couple of scratches there. I don't know if I can get those out. I'll give it a bit more. I just want the thing clear. Even though it's going to be clearer to see how bad that face is, it's better than nothing. And it's better than not doing anything at all. Now, originally I told Dave. I'm going to do this by hand, but I just don't think I'll get the finish by hand. I've got a soft pad on my bar. So why don't I do that? And then come back. And if I wreck it... This is my shed. That's a tree robbing instant. If I wreck it... Well, I'm a bit of a klutz. So let's use this. It's a very soft pad. Uh, can you see that? Yes, you can. And it's made a bit of a difference. So I'm going to put that away. So what we wind up with is something we can see through. Like that. See? Is that nice? And it's a lot clearer. The only problem is, of course, there's a bit of cloudiness in this corner where water was gathered, I think. So I guess the next thing is to prep wash all this and mask all that off and paint it. I might get some paper just to take some of that jagged stuff off. But on the whole, that isn't too bad. It's not too bad at all. I just want to tidy up some of that plastic, so you can still see some crazing and some marks in the glass, or in the plastic. I'm just not sure how practical it's going to be getting rid of that stuff. This is just an off-cut of 180. Most of this you don't see because it's underneath. Um, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Isn't that bloody tree? I'm going to go and cut it back. There's also a hole 
Oh, it's the bottom, isn't it? A little bit of breather hole. Um, hmm. I think in order to test these things, what I can do is just whack a 12 volt globe in there. Are these 6 volt? These are 6 volt ones, aren't they? I want to sort of mock it up and fit it and make sure it all works before I go committing to gluing it up and that sort of thing. Just want to see. Can I get off? Exactly what I'm up against because. Shall I do it this way? Might be easy to see, hey? Apart from one another, and there we go, there's three lights. Alright, so what I want to see is this guy here. Because I reckon, I mean, they do look a bit mangy. I reckon we're going to get. I might have to tighten that up again, just a moment. Okay, we've got the lights there. But the trick is going to be to see whether the light can filter through. So if I take a couple of globes out. I just want to see if we're going to get light bleeding through. Because once I get this thing together, I don't want to pull it apart again. That doesn't look too bad. So as naked as that rubber looks, it might still be sealing light sufficiently. That's not too bad at all. And high beam. I think that's going to be fine. And look, at the end of the day, we know all three sockets work, their integrity is fine, and these are all sealing up light, which is cool. That's what I want to know. This is um, like striping tape. If you get it, you'll use it all the time. The problem is, but it quickly because it then just sort of shrinks back on the roll like that. I'm just going to go back up onto it like that and come around and you can see the residue. We've got to get rid of all that because paint won't stick to it otherwise. And what else do we need to do? Cut it off. And we'll just mask up to that with the regular stuff. Hang on, I've got to get some paper. And it's tedious, this sort of thing, but it's actually... Um, not bad to do. There's worse jobs. Like rubbing back panels. That's my pet hate. Pass it off. I'm just going to go around and pick up all this polish residue and grease and dirt and muck to um, try and make the paint stick better. This paint, <coughs> this paint hasn't gone off properly at all. But I just want to get the masking off. Um, I like to take it off before the paint sort of cures properly. Um, just on the off chance it takes product with it when it's dry. If I can get the bloody thing off. Not perfect, but a heck of a lot better than it was. Still got scratches and stuff like that, but that'll, that's going to do. That's going to be fine. I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got the um, the speedo guts sort of reinstalled in there. Um, I've only got one of those screws. That's all I could find here. I would have liked to put four new ones in, but didn't have them. And of course, this thing here will go over the top, and it's kind of there. Um, scratched up, and the face is a bit mangy, but what do you do? That's the best I can do. Um, that will, I'll just put a silicon adhesive behind there and I'll tape it off when I do that so we don't get it everywhere. Um, and of course after that we've got this little bezel here for the switch and I'm not going to recolor that. There's also a bit of a drama with this chain guard. This is a very, very rare piece to get in good condition of course. That all secures sort of down here, in there, there. And there's also a slide thing that sort of goes up under there. But the issue I've got is it is, the light's terrible, but it's contacting the tyre. Can you see in there? Let me get a light. Hang on. You can see... Uh, hang on. Can you? That's going to hit the tyre. This has got quite a wide tyre on the back. So even though that's fitted properly in these areas, uh, I don't think we're going to be able to put that on. Well, I'm an idiot because I've stuffed this up. This is the helmet lock. It's held in by pretty much nothing. And it's not working now because... I had it recoded. And now it's slipped out. The ledge on the, the bracket holds it all together. 
because it's got to go, one end's got to go against that ledge and the other's got to go against that. Tell you what, bing, there it is, on an angle there. So I reckon if we push this in now, that should work. So we don't want that to come out again, do we? But I want it to detail it, I want to paint it. Just get into all those little nooks and crannies. And it's not absolutely crucial, this, but I don't know. It's the sort of thing where um, if you want the rest of that to look good, then it might be a bit of a necessary evil. The noise is driving me mad. Hang about. What the heck's causing it? Are you the culprit? Yep, that's it there. Cool. I'll put that in the green waste. That is better. Right, so this is a lip on eh? at the back here. And I don't want silicon sealer going everywhere. So what I might do, just pop that off for a second, and I might put a bit of um, tape sort of all around here. So when I wipe the sealer off it, it wipes onto the tape, not onto the speedo housing. I always get gut shots, have you noticed that? When I'm doing this, my son always says, if he sees it, he goes, that's another gut shot. And all you can see, because I point the camera sort of down at what I'm working on, is my bloody stomach. It looks awful. So I'm, I'm sorry if you get heaps of gut shots. Now it's probably a little bleed around there. And hopefully there's no gut shots. I'm squeezing quite hard because I've got a small hole in the end of it. This is just elastic. It's a neutral cure. And it is an adhesive and a sealer. That didn't ooze out. I thought that would ooze out and it didn't. That didn't ooze out at all. Pop this off there. It's all good. There's only a touch of it that came out. So the other thing we've done is we've made number plate holders which look absolutely awful, but it doesn't matter that much. And I'll show you the reason why it doesn't matter. You won't see it, basically, that hangs out from underneath the guard. A rezzo plate sticks there, and then we pop two LEDs in series, three volt each, six volt system. They're gonna go through the back there, and of course, the light's gonna come down. I've got to sort of ascertain what color these are. They're either blue or white. I'm not sure, we don't want blue ones, we want white ones. They're high intensity, so we'll just dust them off with a bit of sandpaper to diffuse the light a little bit. So the back of the guard will come sort of just around to here, so you won't see the LED, but you will see the plate, if it makes any sense. So I've got those to muck around with. That I might paint in a sec. The other thing I want to do is I want to sort these things out. The wires, and we're not going to use these plugs because these plugs are for the other type of blue. So I'm going to drop that in the bin, and I don't think it matters at all. I might cut that off too, that's crap. I don't think it matters that we're going to solder this into the loom, and I'll tell you why. Because it'll all come out with that front loom anyway. I don't think it needs to have a plug on it. So when we go between these two guys that time again, which is cool. So you know, neutral's working. The thing that's upsetting me a bit is we've got none of this action here. Why the heck is that not working there? Not a sausage. This is reasonably crazy because I have right but not left. And I've got no globes on the right hand side. So that's mental. I might put globes in and see if I can figure something else out. Right, so there's a little loom for our warning lamps and that's going to be soldered in. There's another one too, which is just this one that we were mucking around with the other day and we'll clean that up. These come up beautifully with a bit of prep sole. So we'll clean those up with new lights and that's just for your dash illumination. So we'll do that as well. Alter that, maybe leave that and chop that out and put another bullet terminal there or right in the correct Honda one. But that could be, I'm not going to film that, we don't need to worry about that. But I'm going to solder these in now and we should have a bit more luck with uh, how everything's working, I guess. Here with the parkers on, we've got all our dash lights there, we've got our front parker.
David's going to sound like Little Red Riding Hood approaching the third horn. There we go, that'll do it. I thought I already popped these out for five mil, I'm not sure. What am I doing? Oh, here. Yeah. yeah, I did, they just sort of burnt over a bit. And so, we'll do what some of our YouTube friends do, and we'll just hot glue those in once I've painted it and then fudge up the top of them so they don't um, shoot light straight out, they sort of diffuse it a bit. And that will light up, if you imagine, I've got to paint this first. I'm just going to rattle can this, I don't care really how, much, how bad it looks, because I, I don't think he's going to keep it. But that will go, where's the holes? There. It'll sort of work like that, and it'll give us enough light on there. Because some of it will reflect off the bottom of the um, mudguard as well, so that should light up quite well. XL and Clive Ducati 450. Must be one of the early, he did this years and years ago. Good. In there. That looks really good. Dave got himself a 500 motor. Very cheap. And let's just pop a plug in over there, eh? And the, the thinking is to build another bike with the 250, we've got to buy us some time to, and to use this little guy, which I'm rather keen on the idea of, in his 250 frame. Hmm. Is it? Oh, it's probably 19 or something, is it? That would be interesting. So we're going to pop the head off. Chain looks good. Actually, before we take the head off, let's just look at the timing marks. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Everything we had doubts with. Yeah. I reckon we can. But he, he wants hello. to hit you. Hello. <laughs> That's brand new. Yeah. No, because it hasn't run on it. Yeah. <laughs> Is this recording? Yes, this is recording. Taking the covers off, it looks absolutely lovely in here. Not touched, which is a real plus. So that primary drive gear is not chewed up like the other one was. Timing chain tensioner all looks the right way around. We're just sort of taking a little bit of material off the top of the piston to see if it's oversized. Where's the oil restrictor? Hasn't this got one? No, I don't think it's good. Oh, no, it looks just stuff a rag in there. Should be right. Oh, if you don't want to do it, it's just not hurry. Where would it normally be? Oh, so we're just going to take that off and have a look. <laughs> running in a blow smoke. <laughs> That's Mike being a smart ass. Look at him. Go on, get the camera off me. Go on. No, but it was really, really good. Really excited about it. And really clean. There's nothing stuck to the magnets on the alternator. Cam box looks mint. Camshaft looks good. Jesus Christ, I just stood on an air mattress. Sort of like cat. Yeah, sort of like <laughs> That all looks good, doesn't yeah, it? It just says the inlet there. Yeah, yeah, it's a stock one. Yep. You measure it anyway. It's all good. More important than the cylinder head's wonderful. Isn't it? No cracks and plenty of wall thickness between the plug and where the valves are. And the valves aren't sunk. This looks like a peach. So I reckon, <clears throat> all being well, this is going to be the way to go. Back to square one. Back to square one. We've got to split the cases on this one because there's a bit of slack in the big end, which is a bit of a bummer. We've got to go. Is that side to side? Or is that no, that's up and down. Is that, yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit bad. Go said to the sailor. Go said to the sailor. 
Yeah, so that's the problem. That's the only issue we've found. The piston's been getting warm, and there's a few marks at the bottom. Because he's riding up the ball, but the ball looks really good, so I reckon we can get away with the home. But that looks pretty crap. No big deal, we'll get a piston kit for it. 79 model, I reckon. Oh, good. Does that have more clutch packs? Uh, probably, I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure. No, wrapped. It's got studs, which is better than bolts. And I don't know if these are... We've got three scarred pistons from hitting. These are a nice flat top. Plenty of clearance. And it gets us away from that whole set of problems we're having, we hope. So it's all good. Yeah, got to do more filming. There's the head. Valves look great. And it's got the standard 12mm plug, which is really, really good. So I'm wrapped just with that in itself. And uh, this all looks pretty good in here. The spring on the clutch actuator is more sort of linear than the other one was. The other one had a kink in it, and both on both of them. So there is some scarring in the ball. Mm, I feel them ones. Hang on. Yeah, it's been getting warm in there. But um, that barrel is heaps bigger than the other one. It's a lot taller. Yeah. It's a longer stroke and a bigger ball. You compare it to the other one, it's but just... Even weight-wise. Yeah. It's, just, it's double the capacity. Yeah. All good. Yep. We're pretty happy. He looks happy. Very happy. Good. Right. A little bit of an anticlimax because you didn't get to see the bike right up into the sunset, which is what I initially planned for the final chapter. Now, we took the bike from the show back to the workshop, rode it through the workshop on the sort of thing, and it's still got a bit of a noise there, and I don't like it. One of Dave's friends is an independent bike mechanic, and he looked at it, he adjusted the cam chain, and he wants to go back to do the valve clearances. I don't think it's that, but I'd love to be proved wrong. If that sorts it out, <laughs> that's really, really good. So, time will tell. I might upload, if it's something nice and quick and easy like that, uh, I'll upload it and show you. Otherwise, we'll go ahead with the, well, I think he's going to go ahead with the 500cc engine anyway. That's going to be another month or two, uh, whatever it takes him to do, or it takes us to do, I'm not really sure. So from here, we're going to call that now, the XL done for now. Uh, more on the XC, I've been rattling on about headlinings and doors for months. We've got to do it. It has to be done before winter, because we're now the 20th of March, and the weather's going to get unpredictable. Now, we've got in a week and a bit's time, Easter holidays, we're not going away. I might be able to pound out a bit of work on that and get it done. That's the priority. Through the colder months, there'll be a bit of uh, a few other car jobs we can do. I didn't get the body mounts done on the Plymouth, which is a bummer. And we will return to the CB750. Now, I've come across something which is very rare, and that's a Mickey Mouse fuel tank for it. I don't think I'm allowed to tell you where I got it from, but I am absolutely stoked. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Well, I've seen it, but I'm really looking forward to getting hold of that. And um, once I've got the CV750 engine on, I've got the new pistons. I'm going to hydroblast the barrels, the cylinder block if you like. I'll do the head, stick it on. I'm going to start it on the bench on a jig uh, before I put it in the frame because those things are monstrous to get out of the frames and I don't want to put it in the frame and then find out there's an issue with it. I want to have that all sorted uh, before it goes into the frame like we did on the engine stand with the cars. It's much easier, much better doing it that way. So once that's on, I can bang a lot of the 750 back together and that will be great. So until then, please drive safely, enjoy classic and I'll see you around.